like the, there was no kung fu thing really and so marvel said no I, nobody there's no interest in this and we said no no we really do we, it could really we could do it and they said well okay um but if you're going to do it you got to put fu manchu in it right because you got to have a recognizable chinese character we're like yeah that's not really what we had in mind but if that's the ticket to getting it done, okay. Um, so, and the other thing was, we had heard that the Kung Fu TV show, they, they had thought about casting Bruce Lee for it, but the network said, no, you can't have an all Chinese guy. You gotta have, he's gotta be at least half white for our 1970s TV audience. So when we went to Marvel, we said, we're making our guy completely Chinese. And they said, no, no. There's, you know, got to have a white connection in there if you want to sell it. So he became half white. So there, there were editorial things, right? But anyway, so we got this book, put in the most obscure title ever, Marvel Special Edition number 16 or something for the first one, 15 maybe. Um, and we did an issue, and then we did a second issue, and right at that time, Kung Fu just exploded. Just went, you know, worldwide. Everybody fell into Kung Fu. The Upshot of that was so twofold, maybe. One, we were looking to do a bi monthly book that involved Eastern philosophy, and all of a sudden they wanted it to make it a monthly book, and they wanted a giant size book in addition, and they wanted special editions in addition, and they wanted a black and white magazine in addition. And so Starlin and I kind of, kind of bailed. Um, but another aspect of that was the same people who had said there's no interest in Kung Fu said, Oh, let's create our own kung fu character, and that was Iron Fist, right? So, when Netflix did the Iron Fist thing and didn't do Master of Kung Fu, that I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this. And but I also thought, well, now that they've done that, they'll never do Master of Kung Fu because they've got their kung fu character here, right? And then the series wasn't any good, um, and you know, and then you know, but even then, it, it's like. That still they've they've gone down that road and it didn't work for them so now they're certainly not going to do this but it's basically the black panther movie you know when the black panther movie said oh if you do a movie that's all you know done by black people and a lot of black people will show up for it hmm maybe asians maybe we can do that with asians you know and, and, and crazy rich asians but that, yeah. was in there too right so I'm sure, I mean, I'm, I'm not even guessing. That is the genesis of when they finally decided, oh yeah, let's do Master of Kung Fu. So, and it's gonna be an all Asian director, writer, all that good stuff, you know? And I, I, they don't talk to us about the movies. I mean, they're very good about, if they're gonna do Master of Kung Fu, they're gonna read the Master of Kung Fu's, and if they find stuff that they wanna use, they will use it, and they'll credit us, you know? But they don't consult. So I don't know more about this movie than you do. Um, but hopefully, you know, I mean, I, I have great faith in Marvel movies. Captain Marvel, a little bit. Uh, well, let's a little act, bit uh, not up to snuff, but you know. Well, let's talk about that, because some of the major characters that you have been involved with have made the transition to film. So yeah. let's talk about Captain America. I mean, my favorite Captain America movie is Winter Soldier. I right, think it's just. Too. Brilliant, but they've all been. I mean, starting then, all Marvel movies got to be pretty good. Um, well, with Captain America, when they gave me Captain America way back in the beginning, it was a failing book because it was Vietnam War time in America. A large part of your potential audience was living with the idea that they might get called up and sent to Southeast Asia to get killed. So they weren't really, in, and they were billing Captain America as the living legend of World War II. You know, he stood for America in the war. It's like that, you couldn't sell that. And so they, you know, the book was not doing well, so they gave it to the new guy, and they said, see if you can figure something out, because if you can't, we're either gonna cancel it all together, or at least we'll make it bi-monthly. And I went home that night, and, and the idea I came up with was to make him stand for American ideals, the stuff that you hear about that doesn't always show up in practice, but you know, the stuff that you hear about. Um, and that not only worked for that book then and there, but it became the default Captain America after that. That's the guy that's on screen now, right? That's what everybody thinks Captain America is. Um, and certainly that first movie really established that idea, that Cap is the 
idea of America, mm -hmm. which I love. The Joe Johnson, it's really well done. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So what was oh, so watching him develop and now tied into the Avengers and all this stuff going on. Are you just sort of do you get invited to the premiere? Yes, I do. I, any anybody that I created. For example, I didn't create Captain America, so yeah. I don't get invited to a Captain America. Well, actually, I have been. I have been. I guess they do that now, actually. But but theoretically, it's people that I created. So I get invited to Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'll get invited to Master of Kung Fu. You know, I got invited to Luke Cage when it premiered in, you know, on Netflix, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't create Luke Cage either, but I guess I'm associated with it enough. You know, um, yeah, they're you know Marvel. It's a, now, you know, I said when we started it was just comic books. Now, of course, it's the whole Disney empire thing. But on the other hand, you know, the money they spend on lunch is the money they can pop out to, you know, to fly me to places and to go to premieres and stuff like that. And that's, and you know, it's cool. I mean, you know, The last Avengers movie, they had them do it in three theaters. They had so many people there, right? And, and but you walk on the wet red carpet. There's a there's a wall down the red carpet, and the cool people, the actors are out being interviewed on this side of the red carpet. But you're walking down a red carpet, at least down the other side of it, um, you get free popcorn. You know, I mean, <laughs> um, and then there, you know, then there's an after party where you know um, you can go hobnob. With people, um, which is which is kind of fun. I mean, that's not my world, or it hasn't been. Now it's sort of becoming a little bit of my world. Um, uh, after the last Avengers movie, I was talking to Joe Russo, and he said, "How'd you like that big surprise at the end?" And I said, "What surprise?" And he goes, "Well, they all died." And I'm like, "Dude, I've written comics for a very long time." <laughs> <laughs> That just, that didn't, I just, that just went right, you know, and that didn't shock me at all, right? Well, which I think shocked him, because he thought, you know, but you know, I mean, so that's my life now.